Hello guys, Thomas is 66 here, and today I've got another video in the same day. Uh, this time, last time it was a night flight, this time it's a day flight, so you can see everything a bit better. Uh, you should be able to see the visitor part this time. Uh, although I didn't properly like move my camera around to see it, so you can see it, uh, but you can see it at one point when it's taxiing. Here I'm going to show you how to stop an A320, so you can see the green light, that's the aux um, auxiliary power unit. Or, um, that's not the APU though. We're turning batteries instead, but I'm going to use the external power. And then we're going to turn on the master switch for the APU and the uh, APU start switch. The APU is basically an auxiliary power unit. That is basically going to provide the power the, the engines require to get the airflow, to get them up and running, and then you turn it off once it's stable, become stabilised and you're uh, taxiing. Uh, so we're going to start the APU up now. And then we turn on the master switch and the start switch for the APU there. You can see the blue lights at the bottom. It's turned the green, which means that it's on. You hear the little noise then as well. So we've seen the APU bleed on, which gets it running properly. You can hear it now. We've seen on the fuel pumps. And I'm going to move up to the top. And I'm going to basically, there's two red lights. They're fine. They are warnings, but it's just because the engine's not running yet. They will be, be bumped. They will go off soon. So we're turning on what our GPS is. Um, essentially, and you, every time you do one, you have to make sure that that light goes off before you turn the other one on. And you do the one on the left, the one on the right, and the one in the middle. Then we're going to turn on the na uh, beacon lights navigation and lower lights then the uh, leave off the passenger seat belt sign turn on they should not spoken you can arm them but you turn them on instead and arm the emergency lights okay now we're going to go down to our se uh, second mcdu and we're going to start our checklists which we can also have to get to do to make it far, very very okay, very basic let's start with the start up preparation 20 it basically means you have to do hardly anything so i'm having Both to do on. hardly anything we can clear the irs there like i said we set up a, a route, uh, I'm not really, do I'm, not, I'm not even making a route, it's not even a Both route what I'm off. putting, basically, Check so, normal. basically I'm just putting EGCC Check. to L and then L, which is Manchester is International off. Airport to Luca International Airport, Check which is Malta, which is, Check um, retracted. so yeah, so put that in, and then we do, I think, what are we doing then, I'm putting an alternate airport this time, as Check well, on. which is basically if there's an emergency, that's the airport you're going to try to get Check. to, but uh, if it's it within range, because it would be shorter than getting to Luca. And we've got Check cost index, which basically is how it, you're going to save some money. It, it goes up to 999, uh, so you're going to save quite a bit of money there. It's FL 250 is your flight level, which Check. is your cruising altitude, so which is up to 25,000 feet. Um, and then Check. the MON 646 is basically uh, the full time that I've come up with for the flight. Check. And then we've got block fuel here, which is 27.8, that's basically the fuel block fuel amount required for the payload and that of the airbus that we have and then we've got the flight plan here which I'm just putting a SID and a star in but unfortunately we, we only put Set. a SID in and no star but it will fly to Elmer <laughs> so it won't stand us up the only at Malta but we're not going to do the whole flight obviously I have ended the I'll end the flight it's on. Um, during and uh, just after takeoff so I'm just showing you the start of the takeoff check um, so it's going through I set up the runway, but I don't set up to start for that runway. This doesn't seem to be one. I don't know what to do now. I think I'm just checking for discontinuities, which means that if they're there, you're and you're the, cover the autopilot will become confused in flight. They won't know what to do. You need to, so you need to clear that so it'll just fly into the next point no matter what. So we're going to have a FLOX 1, so I'm going to tell the computers, the MCDU, that we want FLOX 1, and it's going to give us a set of speeds. Our speed, so your takeoff speed. So your V V1 is the speed at which your plane you, can, you you can't stop the aircraft if there's an emergency you have to take off. VR is the speed at which you're going to rotate the nose, which is pulling it up, and then hopefully the aircraft will hit the ground if you if the computer's not telling you the right information that you are flying at that you are moving at that speed. And then V2 is the speed at which the aircraft can fly without power in the engines because it's got the force to keep it up in the air for so long. But it, it doesn't mean you can fly the whole flight without any power. It means that for a short period of time you'll be able to fly without you. You know, it's a failure. Um, at the moment, I'm just I'll 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 start I'll close the engine doors there. Uh, engine doors, plane doors. Um, close close and lock. We're turning on the screens. We're setting the auto off now. Is on. And then disconnected and on. We are going to get ready for pushback, which Set on. I have to predict because of the Hydra. software. 
I'm using I'm using the airsoft bug back system. So I need to get the full version of GSX so I've just got one, a child. Zero, one, three. But we have an invisible zero, truck one, uh, pushback car pushing us at the moment because she since I installed the GSX like I said in the last video, it's invisible. So now what I'm gonna do is you can see the screen's wrong, but there's nothing there. There's no information coming up. It's because the the IRS needs to align and I asked it to align and it, on the screen here it's saying when it's coming to align but we're going to set the pushback first uh, I think about, about 11 meters I could have done it really probably was about 11.5 meters but you can't do halves you have to do solid meters so here we've got an invisible plane because when I'm recording with play 4 or 5 because my computer is not the best it struggles, it even struggles when I'm not recording to be honest, it's really bad. Bad graphics, I mean major effort sense to look real and behavioural with by buying a lot of very expensive payware, scenery and aircraft and other add-ons and putting out proper routes and being able to fly other things and having a beastly PC. Unfortunately I do not, I have a very low end PC. I have an NVIDIA G4, uh, not NVIDIA, it's an Aspire a 3910. I bought it the other day NVIDIA graphics card, but it's a very very old bad one, it's the 315 as a part of the GT 315. So now, um, what, what's going on? Oh yeah, I, I've, just, I've just basically estimated roughly what I believe uh, a pushback needs to be, and I'm setting the degrees at which the, we want the aircraft Flight to turn to ground. And we're going to tell them what, wh which direction we want the tail to be pointed in. We want it to be pointed into the right, so, so that the nose is pointing to the left of the uh, taxi clear. line. And we, so that's the direction we need to be taxiing in. And then, I think, yes I did, I ground there's a little switch on the by the throttle. And and I've position. turned it to the right, Awaiting which is to ignition, because that's the engine switch's ignition. Start so push push when I switch, flick, the um, engine switches, Roger. they'll ignite. So brake. you have to wait until they stabilise before release. you can switch that back to normal. Okay. So we release the parking brake. Start they'll start engines. the pushback. Is okay. And now we can flick engine 2 up first. You usually start engine 2 first. We're going to wait for that to stabilise, then we're going to flick engine 1. And that's going to stay uh, eventually stabilise. You can see on the screen, so I think I'll show you in a minute. Because I'm, I'm, pre I'm, um, I'm narrating after I've already done this. This has already been recorded for quite some time. I've been running and erasing. Um, so you can see there's um, a little gauge at the side under number two, which you can see the line Engine moving two up and the numbers are green. And up, so it's, it's stabilised on the password. Then you see the same thing happen with number one. I'm going to wait for that to stabilise, and after that, you can switch, flip the ignition switch to um, normal, which means it's not during flight, it's not going to continuously try and ignite the engines, which basically what it's doing is it's trying to ignite a flame, obviously move the turbines and the blades and the fans, and also inject fuel into the engines constantly and rapidly, um, Engine one whereas when you put stabilized. it normal, as long as they're stabilised and on, they go to the boot one so we can turn it, in. but I'm going to actually request a taxi and depart to the south, which is the direction in which we're flying to to get to Malta. So we're just talking to ATC at the moment, as well as pushing back. And then you'll see the aircraft kind of shudder a bit in a minute, I think, when that's when the aircraft, and I notice, so I look up and I realise that we've stopped the pushback, and they'll tell you as well the ground service. So that's when we have to set the parking brakes, and then do the pre-taxing checklists, and then the tax, um, then we do the taxi checklist once we stop taxing. And I, I, I purpose do a very fast taxi, um, you know, I'm taxing far faster than I should, just to make the view a bit set. quicker. Because uh, otherwise it'd be okay, ridiculous. Uh, one spinning. video of me just no most of the time just old chair signal driving right. around the uh, taxiway to the airport. So we're going to do the um, pre-taxing checklist. So it's at the parking brakes. We're going to wait for Let's a minute whilst with the, the ground crew moves. At the start, which is also the pre-taxing. Taxing. So that's the this engine is set back to normal now. Set off. We just need to. We don't need the APU set anymore off. as well because also the engines are stable and working. Set. And the ground floors are on because in set. case in the mission what well, something happens while she's trying to take off and you need the max brakes. Set. You know, you set the trim. The trim's basically going to make it much easier to move the flight controls and take off. Pull left. See me moving the flight controls now. Pull right. Neutral. 
Pull up. Pull down. Pull down. Oh, you, you see the rudder and you see the rudder pedals at the bottom. Bottom. Neutral. Rudder. Pull, pull left. Pull right. right. Neutral. Okay, so after that, um, just going to set the flaps. Flaps one. To one. Like I told the computers. Are off. We don't need FTI for that because nothing's cold because it's a very warm day and the aircraft is in Check. frequent use. Receive. They just keep warming up to work properly and efficiently. Um, and all we need to do is release the parking brakes and we'll start a taxi and obviously I do have a pretty fast taxi. And then with the parking brake, oh, it'll in a minute it will start a taxi checklist. It asks you to do a brake check which is where you can sit you're not checking the parking brakes, you're not checking the speed brakes. The speed brakes are the little flaps in your wings which are also known on the Airbus and more known as Check the spoilers. On a, a Boeing they're known as speed brakes. It'll ask me to do a differential brake uh, test, an interstate brake check, and making sure that I've reached done it. But you know, look, I do it about three times, and it doesn't realise I've done it, um, which it was annoying me because the captain asked me, look, do you want brake checks? And then the captain eventually says, push pedal. And then I press it again, press finally, pedal. and it fine, check and, you know, and, zero. Then, and it realised that I've done it. So going to taxi now, because it's quite, still quite, even though I'm taxiing quite fast, you'll find that Review. it's still quite a long taxi. Check. So that check. that'll ch uh, change some of the screens to what I need. Save. And, yeah. and then that's just, that, that, them little flicking sort of switching sounds, they're just the throttle. The, on an Airbus, it'll set positions for the throttle. It's quite strange how the throttle works on an Airbus. On Boeing, you turn the auto pilot, the auto throttle on, there's two switches to turn it on, you turn it on, you set your speed. It's simple as that, or you get it to be, to set the, to match the speed that the FMC, or what is the MCDU in the Airbus, what is called the FMC in Boeing aircraft, uh, the flight flight computers, uh, to follow the speed that the computers are giving it. And it'll move itself, whereas in the Airbus, manually it'll be moving itself, when you, you'll be moving it when you fly manually, but when you're on autopilot, you have to manually fly it first, and then after that, you have to have to take off. Once you're up in the air, you've got a positive rate of climb. You're going to move the throttle back to climb thrust position, and then basically that means that the airport, the uh, aircraft can then fly in uh, auto throttle. You turn the auto throttle on; it's just one button, but you have to have the throttle kept in climb thrust, and it's only by. And so that means in Airbus, if you knock the throttle, you're going to have uh, warnings all over the place talking about takeoff trim and speed 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 brake trim and all this other stuff because it thinks you're flying too fast and also the autopilot or the autopilot will be disengaged but the it's you're, you've still got the autopilot button on so it thinks it's supposed to be on but it's not working so to that it thinks the autopilot is broken and so it's it's not a funny it's not a fun thing to deal with and it's happened to me a few times where i accidentally knock it and i'm like what the hell's going on i realize what's going on and all you have to simply do is put it back to climb for us and it'll continue to work. And it's also best to turn off and on the autopilot at the same time of doing, uh, of putting the throttle back to the climb thrust. Because at that point in time, it just switches off all the caution warnings for you. This is still going to be a pretty long taxi, even though I'm doing it quite fast. Actually, at this point in time, I'm actually taxiing at quite a sensible speed. There's a Cherokee, Piper Cherokee, uh, in front of us. That takes off first before it's going to hold short a bit early. Um, so we don't get to take off as quickly as you, I would have been able to, but it's still fine. It's only like an extra 30 seconds anyway. Added on to the video, which is nothing. It's another 30 seconds of your precious lives watching my video. Well, and obviously we're taxing an invisible plane at the moment. You know, the military should just make invisible planes like this. So I think now you should, yeah, you will be able to see the uh, pistol part in a minute, at least. Yeah, I think bit, bit, bit actually. You can see the pistol part now, uh, but it's better, better be further up. I don't actually look to the right at that point in time, so you don't get a proper good look at it. I would have, I might, I might do a video where I just fly, do it, I fly a small aircraft like this. Cessna 172 is the default one because I don't have the pay. I want to get the A2A 
uh, P1 ones, very very realistic modelling of the uh, Cessna 122 which I'm actually having a flight lesson this year in uh, on August the 21st, the 22nd of August I've got a, yeah, it's the 21st of the results GCSE and then hopefully they're good enough to know I can be a commercial pilot and we'll that's the case but now you can see the Vista Park, you can see the hangar with the Concorde in it which I'm going to this Saturday and then you can also see, I think you did catch a glimpse a bit further back of the Monic uh, cockpit and from fuselage that's been cut off of a, I think it's an April 30, an April 40, something like that, or possibly it's like a, a seven, I don't know, possibly a Boeing aircraft. Um, but they've actually cut off and it's a real one and they've turned it into an office suite because the uh, Monic retired that particular aircraft and they don't have any others of it. Also, the tri there's a Trident there, Br British Airways Trident, and there's also the Nimrod, and they've got the uh, aviation shock and that kind of thing there. So no, we are very on the little taxiway that takes you straight to Marabok now. So there's a few of us that are split off. So we're pretty close. Yeah, we're, we're, we're on the uh, one straight to Pipe Black. Here's this little bit we can see now. See, I'm looking to the right there, thinking that I can see the beam park and realise I've got past it. Um, I was a bit too late for that, because I was concentrating on taxiing. So, straight up, and then we have to uh, hold short. Flight attendants, please prepare for takeoff. Takeoff. I accidentally also before put the take off, take off for us when we're holding short. Right. Um, check. So they think right. we're doing takeoff. When we're not, so you'll hear the, you'll hear the first off, uh, the captain go, okay, let's go, take off. And then um, PA and the co pilot will go, the first officer will say, um, FMA check. Set and then on. obviously they won't see anything else because we're not moving. Stowed. So we're holding short Hurley here. Let's see. We're stopping here because obviously this is true in front of us of a plane. I don't know why they have little. Propeller planes flying from Manchester Airport. It's a bit strange, to be honest. Um, so, let's see. So we're just going to wait a minute. I, I was just checking on it. You see, you'll see that this plane, this pilot talking at this moment on ATC, is actually the trophy in front of us. They're across the table. So we're just waiting for them. Uh. Take off. Okay, let's so go. I'm gonna take off. See, I, I push you up to hold short properly, and then I'm going to request to take off clearance. But obviously, I'm told to hold short still because obviously the plane, the truck is on the runway, um, as it's traffic. So we'll just have to. So we're going to hold short in a minute. You got the flashing lights either side, you got the sirens. And Big yellow line, which is dotted service, surface, and then a solid line as well, front, as you can see. We're going to hold them short, and then we'll go back to ATC. We're going to request to take off. They don't want to allow it straight away. Like I said, left. So they're telling us what traffic's on the runway, which we know, because we've seen it. And so we're just waiting for them to take off, and then we get clearance straight away without expecting it. I wasn't expecting it to go and move onto the runway. So whilst they're taking off, we're moving onto the runway and positioning ourselves for takeoff. Which usually you can just obviously wait if you if you're the first one you can just and you're cleared you can just move onto the runway you don't have to hold you have to position yourself but whilst positioning yourself you're taking off at the same time whereas when it's when you're in queues like this you obviously you get to you have to wait you have to hold short uh, and it's big queues and hold short of other places as well and you have to wait on the runway for others to take off on runway zero six, six left and I, I know we've set up to five left because this is five left. But recently, uh, Manchester 
obviously changed in real life as well in the class while they're doing it on FSX is um, they've updated it to 6 left because it's now called 6 left not 5 left anymore uh, but to FSX it's still 5 left but to the Airbus it's 6 left because this, the Airbus is very a very new simulation whereas FSX is considered a base simulator it's obviously quite old so now we're taking off so we're cleared we so now we continue with the takeoff and they'll pull out 100 knots in a minute There you go, and then our takeoff speed I believe is around 130, I think it's 133 knots. So a bit, quite a bit further down the runway, and then we should reach the speed, which we do obviously. And I'm going to pull up the takeoff manually, and then we're going to set climb thrust and turn a little power. So there you go, look, you want to rotate, so rotate, and then I, I gear up. I'm just trying to maintain the aircraft's direction and altitude. Speed and then when I feel steep enough, what should do then? Climb thrust. Set climb thrust and turn on the smile. Autopilot is on. So now we are just flying, so I'm going to probably put some music on um, before the end of this, and then I'll probably have something else to say. So please continue watching. the take off check.
Okay, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. And remember, rate and subscribe.